In the introduction of your student video, explain how information processing theory, the major elements of information processing theory, are connected to this activity. And talk about how social learning theory helps you function within a group, especially if this skill involves group learning. Talk about multiple intelligence theory and how it relates to learning styles and how having a good understanding of learning styles can make you more efficient at taking environmental information and processing it to get it into short-term memory and then eventually into long-term memory. How types of knowledge and having a good understanding of what to focus on first related to the subject can make you a more efficient learner at taking environmental stimulus from short-term memory to long-term memory. And then also talk about Bloom's taxonomy, how taking all of these elements can get you to the upper levels of learning. You might also discuss how experiential learning would be perfect for learning a complex task like the pump drill and how this could be set up as an active learning demonstration. So all those previous topics that we've covered throughout the weeks, how are they connected to taking environmental stimulus, paying attention to it, getting it into short-term memory so that eventually if we rehearse it enough, we can get it over into long-term memory. In the next segment of video, as you tie a clove hitch with a couple of half hitches to bind the cordage to the spindle, talk about how understanding your learning styles makes you a more efficient learner. Meaning that you can take environmental stimulus and be as efficient as possible with new and novel information so you're not wasting your time. So a real world example of that would be if I read how to tie this knot, but that's not my primary learning style, it may take me way longer to be able to learn the knot and how it's used. But if I know I'm a kinesthetic and visual learner and I use that learning style, to take some sort of new knot tying activity, I'll learn it way faster. So I can take that environmental stimulus, it helps me pay attention to it, so I can get it over into short term memory. Once it's in short term memory, I can rehearse it enough to get it to long term memory. And that's true for implicit knowledge, like procedural knowledge, which would be connected to kinesthetic learning styles but it's also connected to explicit knowledge. If I use my primary learning style to learn something that is factual, I'll be way more efficient and take less time to get that knowledge from short-term memory to long-term memory. So once you've placed the handle on and you've tied your clove hitches to secure the handle, for that next segment of the video, talk about the length of the spindle and why on a pump drill, you're gonna need a longer spindle than you would for the gas pedal hand drill and possibly even the thumb loop hand drill. The main reason for that is because we need all of this travel, right? And we're gonna have a counterweight, so we need space for that as well. So we need a, a longer spindle, but, it needs to be about the size of a hand drill spindle. And I'll explain why in just a second, but explain this in terms of what types of knowledge are most important. So obviously we have factual knowledge about how that's gonna work and conditional knowledge, the conditions it needs to be used in and conceptual knowledge, because it's gonna be linked there as well. So for the fireboard, talk about prior knowledge that you had that helped you make or select the appropriate fireboard. So since we're using a hand drill size spindle for the pump drill, you also want the same size fireboard that you would use for a pump drill. So everything that you would have used for the hand drill will be the same when you're making the fireboard. So about a quarter of inch in length, divot, fairly small notch is going to be fairly small compared to a bow drill so that that dust will collect but here's the difference 
that divot, even though it's gonna be the same size as the spindle, we need to make sure that it's a little deeper than you would start with on a hand drill. Like if I started here, this is gonna jump out because of the rotation of the counterweight. So we, because of the effect of the counterweight and having a difficult time getting a counterweight balanced, this divot needs to be a little bit deeper. So you wanna burn it in a little deeper before, start, before you get started. And so that's gonna link you to prior knowledge of hand drills and how to create it. But there is gonna be one difference in that, actually two differences. The divot needs to be deep enough and the length of the fireboard needs to give you enough distance so that the counterweight doesn't hit your ankles. You're gonna need at least one foot to hold down the fireboard if you don't tie it down to a heavier object. And in that case, you're gonna need a longer fireboard. Now, if you only have a, a shorter piece that will work as a fireboard, you can tie it down to a heavier object and then you won't need your feet to hold it down. Now let's talk about the counterweight in terms of the knowledge needed when it comes to short-term memory and explicit knowledge. So this is something new and novel to you because we haven't used a counterweight before. We're gonna have to balance this out and I'll sh I showed you how in the skill video, so we won't do it on this one. And it needs to be the appropriate weight and really the appropriate size because you don't want this to be too big. And as long as you're using a hand drill size spindle, you can keep this counterweight fairly small. Now you notice here, I'm sliding this on. I wanna keep enough distance so if I had to hold the fireboard down with my feet, this is not gonna impact my ankles because it will hurt you. So you can tie this down. You can see the grooves I've used to tie it down. You can also put a shiv in there. What I mean by that is I slide that little piece of wood in and then I break it off. And I do that on each end. You may want to hammer it in like a thin piece of wood. That'll also help you keep the counterweight in place. But all this knowledge that I'm telling you right now is something new and novel. We didn't do this on previous skills. We didn't have use for a counterweight. So in the summary of your video, talk about how the pump drill can be used to teach concepts or the difference between explicit and implicit memory because that's where we're going next with the pull drill, and that'll link us from this topic to the one in the future.